If anyone, had more doubt about crazy Elon Musk, and his incredible ideas, this video will definitely set your opinion. Not only, he want to establish a permanent human base to the moon in the next few years, and to Mars in the next decade, but now he wants to land the super heavy rocket booster, without any landing legs. Stay with us in this video, and be amazed by the new technology, SpaceX will use to land their super heavy booster. Press the like button from the beginning of the video and if you don't like the video you can take it back. Also, don't forget to subscribe and use the notification bell so you get a notification when a new video is released on Tech People. Let's get the rumble started. SpaceX is well underway in the development of Starship and Super Heavy rocket systems. We have seen two 150-meter hops of the full-scale Starship and a 12.5-kilometer high-altitude flight test. However, in order to reach the Moon and later Mars, a very essential part is the fully reusable rocket system. Super Heavy SpaceX's Starship is built from two stages. First is the Starship that we saw the test flight serial number 8, that had, an unscheduled rapid disassembly while kissing the Earth, because of a low-pressure fuel tank malfunction. And the second, is the Super Heavy Booster, that basically is a huge rocket that will help Starship leave the Earth orbit. Both stages of the rocket, need to be able to land themselves, refuel, and get ready for a new mission in few days if not hours. Recently, Elon Musk, updated us with some radical plans to land the Super Heavy Booster. He wrote on Twitter that, SpaceX will try to catch the Super Heavy Booster with the launch tower arm, and the grid fence taking the load. So the first question that arises here is, why SpaceX want to ditch the landing legs which are more reliable, and use a crazy super sci-fi landing system? Well, there are two main reasons why SpaceX wants to eliminate the landing legs. First, it reduces the mass of the booster, and also eliminates the cost and complexity of designing and manufacturing the landing legs. Secondly it helps achieve rapid reusability, that we will explain later in this video. Let's look into these reasons one by one. Being 70 meter tall, Super Heavy is estimated to have a dry mass of about 180 metric tons. So, in order to successfully land such a heavy thing, the landing legs also need to be heavy duty. For instance, let's take example of the Falcon 9 first stage. The landing legs of the Falcon 9, are made up of carbon fiber combined with aluminium, and even though it uses carbon fiber a single landing leg weighs up to 600 kg. Now, scale up the Falcon 9 booster, to the size of SpaceX's super heavy rocket. Landing legs, are surely going to add a lot of mass and, anyone who knows a bit about rocket equation, knows that adding mass to the rocket, requires more fuel to lift, which in turn adds more mass. Apart from the mass it adds, the complexity of designing the landing legs, for the Super Heavy is also a problem. We must know that the current Starship landing legs are not the best, and SpaceX engineers are still looking for better options. So, eliminating the landing legs altogether does seem a good idea. As Elon said, legs would certainly work, but best part, is no part, best step is no step. Then Viv said, you're truly playing Kerbal, the real world edition, aren't you? is mostly to delete the weight of legs from the design or any other reason? Will precision, stability of landing be the same or even better than with legs? And Elon replied, saves mass and cost of legs and enables immediate repositioning of booster onto launch mount, ready to refly in under an hour. Then James Stevenson said, yeah, you could build shock absorbers into the launch stand's arms without having to worry about any weight penalty. And Elon replied, exactly. So it does look like a good option, but how is it going to work? One thing we need to know, is that the grid fins that Super Heavy is going to use to maintain the attitude during descent, are going to be huge with some estimates saying, the grid fins can be 7 meters long and 3 meters wide. These grid fins are going to be made of steel and they are capable of taking the load of the nearly empty Super Heavy booster. So as you can see, the Super Heavy booster will propulsively land using the Raptor engines and precisely target the launch mount, where the launch tower arms would clamp in below the grid fins and then close off. This render looks more feasible than the other renders that came out with the launch tower arms coming from the sides and also using powerful shock absorbers. This approach does have some challenges. First is the precision landing. 
Even though the Falcon 9 booster lands with pinpoint accuracy, it still has some room for errors. But, Super Heavy will have to be almost precisely above the launch pad for the arms to catch it. In addition to this, Super Heavy will be hovering above the launch pad when it will perform the landing burn. It will have just enough fuel to perform the suicide burn. These problems can lead to some massive explosions, and it may even damage the whole launch pad, and considering the complexity of the landing procedure, I am sure we will see some rapid and scheduled disassembly along the way. SpaceX is currently stacking the first Super Heavy Booster prototype BN-1. We are going to see some high-altitude flight test or orbital flight test this year, we may even see the landing mechanism in action. So that's all for today's video. If you like the content do consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching. Have a beautiful day.